So out of all the thousands of rays that is passing through point A, there will be one ray which is parallel to the principal axis whose path I know. And that is the reason I told you four basic rays and the nature of these four basic rays. What do we know? If there is a ray of light which is passing parallel to the principal axis, it is going to pass through the focus. It's going to pass through the focus. We know that, right? Okay. Next is we have to choose one more ray because there has to be an intersection, right? For image formation, there has to be an intersection of what? Of the reflected ray. So I choose, so out of four, I have got any choice. I can choose any, but I'll choose one ray which is passing through the center of curvature. So if I draw a diagram such that it passes through the C, because I know the nature, it's going to retrace its path. So if this is the incident ray, on reflection, it is going to retrace its path, right? Where I'm going to get point A, this will be A dash, and then this is going to be point B. So somewhere over here is going to be B dash. So this is where I'm going to get an image, something, I'll try to draw it, something like this, is how you're going to get an image. All right, so this is how you get an image. Simple, easy. What about the nature of the image? Well, is it upright or inverted? Certainly it is inverted. Are the rays actually meeting? Yes, sir. The rays are actually meeting. So it is a real image or a virtual image? Sir, it is a real image, right? Is it of the same size or a smaller size or a larger size? So if it is of the same size, we'll say the size is same. If it is a smaller size, we'll say that it is diminished. And if it is of a larger size, we will say that it is magnified. All right, okay. Now the first question in terms of the characteristic of the image will be, where is this image located? Where is the image located? So first point is, where is the object located? Object is located beyond C. Where is the object located? Object is located beyond C. That is center of curvature. No problem. Where is the image located? The image is located somewhere between C and F. All right. The image is between C and F. All right. Next is the nature of the image. Is it real or is it a virtual image? Okay. So is it real image or virtual image? How do we decide? Well, we have to see is the reflected rays, are they actually meeting or not? So reflected rays are actually meeting. So it is a real image. And is it inverted or upright? So it is an inverted image. Real images are always inverted. We know that. Okay. And then last is, what about the size? Is it magnified? Is it of the same size or is it diminished? Certainly you can see the size of the image is small. So it is diminished, right? So once we know all these characteristics, we can just state it out. Very simple, we can draw the ray diagram and we can write down the characteristic. Now my dear friends, as we draw the ray diagram, please don't ignore writing the characteristic of every image. Don't ignore that, that's very important for us, okay? It should be like one particular chunk. When you're drawing the ray diagram, always write down the characteristic of the image formed, okay? Perfect, we understood this. If it is beyond, now let's just push this object a little bit more and which is the next known point for us? The next known point for us is the C. What will happen? What will happen? if I put the object at C, because you put anywhere, the object anywhere over here beyond C, the image is always going to be formed between C and F. We know that, right? So now if I put the object at C, then what is going to happen? That's the next one, okay. So when you have got an object at C, this is a, going to be a special point. How, C? Again, I have to choose two rays, correct? Two rays is what we have to choose. Let's choose the first one. Let's take it as, Let's take it as a parallel ray. Out of thousands of the rays that will be passing through this point, I'm choosing this. Why? You know, I have repeated it so many times. Okay. So if a ray is parallel, we know that it is going to pass through the focus. Going to pass through the focus. Okay. Next one, we can choose a ray which is passing through the focus and I know that it's going to emerge parallel, right? So I'm going to choose a ray which is passing through the focus and I know that it will emerge parallel to the principal axis, something like this, right? Incident ray passing through the focus. And then, so what do you get? You get an image right over here, something like this, okay? Exactly 
at the same point and of the same size almost of the same size if you are doing it properly with a scale and pencil with proper measurements i'm sure you'll get exactly the same size so now we know how to draw the ray diagrams right what will be the nature of the image what will be the characteristics of the image we have to find out what was the first question that we should be asking ourselves first is where is the object sir object is at c this is the first question always whenever you have drawn the ray diagram then start asking these questions and go on writing the answer the first question where is the object object at c okay fine one thing done tick second where is the image formed image is also formed at c <laughs> okay third one is is it a real image or a virtual image how will we find out are the reflected rays actually meeting or do they appear to meet so in this case certainly the reflected rays are actually meeting so if the reflected rays are actually meeting then certainly it's a real image and real images are always inverted correct and the size of the image well is it of the same size is it diminished or is it magnified we know that the image that we have got in this particular situation and that is why i am telling you special case okay that the size of the image is same as that of the size of the object okay now why is it a special case because sometimes you see in a question if they want to trap you they might not tell you where the object is located but they will give you this one sentence that the image form is of the same size as that of the object now you know that where the object is located it's as simple as that all right okay so if i want to talk about this particular case you can trace the ray diagram and you are going to get the characteristic of image as it is formed at c it is real it is inverted and it is unmagnified which means it's the same size as that of the object it neither magnified it's neither more nor less okay so it's unmagnified next let's push this little bit further okay let's bring it between c and f and let's see then what happens so if it is between c and f again we have to choose two rays so let's say first one i choose one parallel ray like this and i know that it is going to pass through the focus i know that it's going to pass through the focus so i'm just drawing a rough diagram you can draw properly with your scale and pencil okay and the next one i can choose a ray which is passing through the focus okay i can choose a ray which is passing through the focus i know that upon reflection it is going to emerge parallel to the principal axis where is it meeting it's meeting beyond c so you are going to get an image somewhere over here somewhere over here something like this is what you are going to get okay something like this now you can certainly see in this case that you have one reflected ray over here another reflected ray over here this is where they are meeting and this is how you are obtaining the image all right now in this case if i talk about the nature of the image where it is located and all again after drawing this the questions that we should be asking is where is the object located first question that will be given in the question itself the condition itself it's between c and f next question is where is the image located well the image is located beyond c c is center of curvature so image is located beyond c is it a real image yes sir it's a real image real images are inverted yes sir and when you look at the size of the object and the image certainly even if you have drawn it yourself you see that the size is magnified correct so you get a magnified image in this case so what kind of a uh, image you are going to get magnified image which means the size of the image will be greater than the size of the object okay so the characteristic of the image is it is formed beyond c the image is real it's inverted and it's magnified next let's push this object little bit further to our next known point that is f all right that's at the focus so if i place an object at the focus then what happens so if i place a image at the focus then i need to choose the ray okay 
So in this case, I'll choose a ray which is passing through the center of curvature one. Why? Because if I'm choosing it over here, a ray which is parallel, it has to pass through the focus, but the object is at the focus. No, so I don't want to take that. So let us take, and you have a choice of choosing the ray, right? So I can choose a ray which is passing through the center of curvature. There is a ray which is passing through the center of curvature and it retraces its path. No problem. Another one, I can choose a ray which is incident at the pole and I know that this ray which is incident at the pole is it makes an angle of theta with the principal axis then the angle of reflection will also be equal to theta right wonderful okay what do you see about the reflected ray where are they meeting where are they meeting they don't seem to meet because the reflected ray in this particular case are parallel and they will meet only at infinity because we know that parallel rays meet at infinity. Now when I'm saying infinity, what does it mean actually? What does it mean practically? Let us say the aperture is around of 2 centimeters and these rays upon reflection they are meeting at a distance of let us say some 1500 meters. So when you see 2 centimeters and 1500 meters, well 1500 meters is or can be treated as infinity. All right, did you get this? All right, so we are talking in relative terms. Okay, so they will be meeting at a very, very far away location. So if they will be meeting, I know that parallel rays are going to meet at infinity and these are going to meet. Then what about the nature of the image? What about the nature of the image? Certainly, the nature of the image, we can say, is going to be real and inverted. Real and inverted. Because certainly they are going to meet, they are going to meet very far away. Yes, that can be treated as infinity, of course. But the image will be real and inverted and it is going to be very large. Highly magnified. Correct? Highly magnified. Okay. And where is the image formed? Of course, at infinity. Clear with this? Okay. Now let's push this forward and now we have got only one choice to put it between F and P. Now this position of the object is a very special position. You'll come to know. Why? Because all this while, all this while, we have seen wherever the object was, you always obtained a real image, a real and inverted image. Always you obtain this. But now once it goes beyond F, that is the object is between F and P, then what happens? That is very interesting. So that is why I told you that this is a special point. Again, we have to choose a ray. Let's choose the first ray, which is passing through the center of curvature. Something like this. I know it is going to retrace its path. Correct. The second one, as usual, I'll choose an oblique incidence, which is over here at the pole. Right, it's coming like this, let us see. Okay, I'm just doing a free hand. You can definitely use a scale. So if this is theta, this is also going to be equal to theta. So what do you see? The reflected rays are diverging. Will they ever meet? As you go further and further, the, this divergence will be more and more. It is never going to meet on this side of the mirror. Correct? So, if you produce it backwards, they seem to be coming from this point. They seem to be coming from somewhere over here, okay? Roughly, I am drawing somewhere over here. So, you are going to obtain a large image over there. A large image. And if you see, what kind of image you are going to get? Something like this. Something like this. A highly magnified image. No? A highly magnified image. I'm just giving you a, sorry, a rough diagram, okay, a highly magnified image. So, you're going to get something like this, something like this, okay, roughly, just drawn a rough diagram. I'll show you a proper one also. I'm just trying to draw a rough diagram over here, okay. So, this is the point where you're going to get a virtual image because you see now reflected rays are not actually meeting. They appear to meet behind the mirror, correct? 
and then only in this particular case for a concave mirror when the object is between f and p then only you are going to get a virtual image clear with this clear with this in all other situations you are going to get a real image all right so let me just show you a proper proper diagram okay so if you take these two rays it appears to meet over there and then you see the image formed is beyond p it's virtual it's upright and it is magnified 